Letting the pin and water shine. Shine the light on the underground. Music Monday videos. Make it one day, here we go. So I make it featured on the show. Sign up and get on your grizzly, yo. You might have seen them on the road. With the camera and the microphone. Shine a light on independent artists. Yeah, they gon' hate, we gon' get it regardless. Riding the hardest to get to the bag. Walking that Instagram cash. Rolling that old duty bass. Shimmy, 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 yeah. Give me, give me, give me more. Music Monday video. Music Monday videos. One exposure, there it go. Wanna get it, there go. Wanna make it, here go. Music Monday videos. Wanna get it, there go. Wanna expose it, there go. Wanna make it, here go. There go. Music Monday, there go. Music Monday, there go. Music Monday, there go. Music Monday videos. Wanna make it, there go. Wanna get it, here go. Wanna expose it, there go. Videos, 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 music Monday, videos, videos, give me, give me, give me a moment, one exposure, there you go. already know what it is it's your boy johnny fast lane with music monday videos and that video right there was ballpark it was fire i'm sitting here with none other than billboard baddie how you doing i'm good how are you i'm good i'm chilling yo that song ballpark is fire the video was fire um i was supposed to be at the video shoot but you know i i didn't make it <laughs> i was in the studio when she recorded the song though so you know it's all good but um all right so you're billboard baddie right 
but there's a bunch Betty. of billboards out there. There's we don't even want to talk about the other billboards and nothing like that. Right. Um, but International Raven, uh, Baddie Bills, Young Rave. Officially, what what's your name? What can I call you? You could call me whatever feel comfortable coming off your lips. But I I am Billboard Baddie, aka Automatic Baddie, aka okay. Raven International. Okay. Period. And it, and listen, it doesn't stop. It's gonna keep going as I elevate. The names will keep going, period. Your name is going to elevate with yeah. you. It's going to morph into more and more and more, right? Yes. It's a mood. So, like, I've noticed that your name is in a bunch of rooms that, like, you're not even in yet, right? And that's the dopest thing ever to know that your name is out there in rooms. People are talking about you all over New York, right? Um, but people don't really know a lot about you. That's why I called you in. Right. You're very mysterious. And, I mean, let's just take it back. Like, where are you from? Well, I'm from Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. I'm, my block is Madison, Patchen, and Ralph. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's my stomping grounds. Uh, I live in Crown Heights, though. All right. I got family in Brownsville. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, I got like my homeboy Trip, Triple Stacks. He's from the 90s. So, Shout like, out to Trip. Okay. Yeah. He's I'm, Flatbush. <laughs> yeah, I'm embedded all around Brooklyn, you know? What made you want to start getting into rap or not even rap? Because you're more than just a rapper. You're all around artist. You're an entertainer. Um, what made you want to get into entertaining in the first place? Well, my uncle said that I used to stay in the mirror. And he used to have to turn the lights out <laughs> in the bathroom because I used to just be talking and doing makeup. And so he always said I was an entertainer. But honestly, like one day I saw like the quiet storm, like Little Kim and Mob Deep. Uh -huh. And I saw that video and I was like, yo, this shit is lit. I was like, fire, yo, right? she's fire. Like this whole, it, I felt it in my body. I was like, nah, I think I want to tap into this hip hop shit. All right, so that's dope. So what you're saying is that like Little Cam, when you heard her on Quiet Storm, that's what like really influenced you to put like your pen to that paper. Yeah, like when I heard Little Kim on Quiet Storm, I was like, yo, who is this chick? Let me go to her albums. Let me write down all her, her rhymes. Let mm -hmm. me see if I can mimic her. Mm -hmm. And then after that got dried out, I was like, I need to come up with my own shit, period. Like, yeah. ain't too much Little Kim. Like, I went through her whole catalog. Like, so I started writing my own rhymes. So shout out to the Queen Bee, you know what I'm saying, for, like, influencing. We got <laughs> Billboard Baddie here right now from Brooklyn, you know? Oh, um, so early in your rap career, um, even before the hug Hugging Money click, because uh, I just learned something new today, man. You was down with Triple Stacks, right? You yeah. Was, you was down with Trip. Tell me about that. Yeah, so basically I went from rapping at the lunch tables, mm -hmm, like skipping mm -hmm. classes, rapping at the lunch tables, and then I started hanging out in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then I like came into a crew of rappers. It was like some gangster rappers. Mm -hmm. And they was more of an inspiration for me. So I started hanging out. We, we named that group A&S. Okay. Right. It, it had a lot of different uh, meanings. <laughs> what was the main meaning? The only A&S I know is like the department store. What was the, what was the meaning for it, Trip? Always into something. Always into something. A&S. Always into something. And you was always into something, I'm sure. You heard? Then after that, you started working with um, Hugging Money Keem, right? Yes. You was with the Hugging Money Click. Yes. I released a few freestyles. I was inspired to come back. And then somebody was like, yo, you know what? I can help you with your album. Let's mm -hmm. do this. And then I came up with this song called Ice Cream when I was washing dishes. And then I sent it to him. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, Ice Cream is like one of my favorite joints of hers. It's fire. Uh, her verse is sick on there. The mm -hmm. video was crazy. Right. I mean, like, what was it like just like filming that video and, and the vibe? Did you know it was going to be such a hit? Um, I didn't know. A lot of people reference that song when it comes to me. Yeah. I post pictures and they was like, sweeter than Ben and Jerry want to lick me. I'm like, oh, that should have been the <laughs> caption. What was I thinking? But um, I didn't know because I just like come up with stuff and I record it. But literally it was a dope experience. It was literally like 10 degrees outside recording that video. <laughs> but you can't tell I was cold at all. But it was a dope experience. We was in Atlantic City, all up and down Atlantic City with that video. So dope. check out Ice Cream. Y'all definitely needs to check that shit out. It's fire. It's, it's like a Billboard Baddie classic at this point, really. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then you started working with um, Dr. T, right? Yeah, DRT. Um, on American Dream. Yes. Tell me about that. So American Dream is like my debut album, mm -hmm. although I never even put out an EP before. Okay. I just literally met somebody that's connected on another planet. Like, he's from Paris. He mm -hmm. has a lot of ties in the game over there. He saw my talent, and, you know... 
I said, why not try something, mm -hmm. you know, with a different person? So I'm working on American Dream, and that's what it is right now. It's going to be available soon, mm -hmm. so I can't wait to share that. But I always have something brewing, at, at, like literally always got something brewing. So Dr. T, he's, he's your producer on American well, Dream? Yeah, he's... I'm working with him as my main producer. Just for that project. For though. that project. For okay. that project. Okay. Not yeah. for everything, right? No, no. Okay. Just for that project. I do have another producer for one song called I Don't Know. His name is King Dre. Mm -hmm. Shout out King Dre. So Dr. T, is he here in the US or He's in he's in Europe. Oh, Europe. Okay. Yes. So how'd you guys link up? Well, I was on vacation <laughs> and I needed some weed. <laughs> okay. And he was smoking. <laughs> he was smoking and Dope. i was like is that the same shit i got and it was nice nice but then i had like my own speaker and he was like oh i like the music you playing mm -hmm. but then it wasn't until three months later he sent me like some beats like he never let me know he was a producer oh, like really? he, okay. it never was a pitch it never was anything he saw how much i was grinding and i was like consistent mm -hmm. he's like take this beat pack mm. so being that you're from New York, though, um, I mean, because to me, you're, you're not just like a rapper from New York. You're more like a pop artist. So I see why you're getting beats from Dr. T and everybody. Yeah. Would you work with any producers like here in New York? Yes. Holla at me, producers. I'm here. I'm, I'm ready. So you're a rapper. Yeah. Uh, people know you for that. Um, but to me, like I said, you're not just a rapper. Um, you do other things too, right? You're I live in my own reality show. Right, right. You're you're on YouTube. <laughs> like, tell me more about the other things that you're doing right now. Well, right now, what I'm doing is I am gonna come up with a. I'm working on a podcast where mm -hmm. I just discuss discuss hip hop. Um, but basically, I do a lot of content, pictures. I have my website, so a lot of the stuff that I'm working with, you can literally like go on my website. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you could go on my website and see. But right now, I'm totally focused on music. I used to be on, like, Jack Thriller show and stuff like that. So I used to do a lot of hosting and stuff like that. But I kind of toned it down just to solely focus on music. Okay. Okay. Um, now, also, you're a big, other than hip-hop, right? You're a big weed advocate, right? Yes. Yes. You're, you're a stoner. My fellow pothead here, you know, um, you actually <laughs> have a line of merchandise, right? Like yes. trays, grinders, and things yes. like that, papers. Tell yes. us about that. Well, I do have a merch line. It's like, it's not just a merch line, but it is a lifestyle. This type of merch you don't see on a regular. Um, actually, I have a gift for you. <laughs> so I brought you a tray. Oh shit! Listen, I did not even know. I brought know. him like one of my rose gold trays. It's oh, like yeah, a travel size fire. tray. So this is like something you would see like okay, on my okay. website. Um, I'm rolling up on this tonight. Yeah, you'll see. That's the rose gold one. That's a big. That's a popular one, and also the gold one. So a lot of the, the trays that I have, no one else have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What else you got? You you the plug. <laughs> no, I'm not the plug. I'm not the plug. I'm not the plug. <laughs> but I do get the finest buds. I know the people's. Okay, they might okay. be very close by. All right, so let the people know what's coming up next, what you got going on. Okay, so right now, like I said, American Dream is coming up. American Dream. Stay tuned for American Dream. I got the Get Money Freestyle that I just dropped. We're about to get into that right like now. Like two or three weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? That's fire. I got a few people following me off of that. Um, people in the game. Dope. So I guess I am making a little, making my moves out here. Um, and also, like the podcast. We're going to be talking about female etiquette, male etiquette, hip hop, okay. everything. Hell yeah. So you already know what it is. It's Johnny Fastlane, Billboard Baddie. And we'll be back. Let's get into that Get Money Freestyle right now about Billboard Baddie. Yeah. Yeah. Real. Real. DRT. Uh, uh. Fuck bitches, they act funny. Act funny. Fuck niggas with no money. Fuck, Fuck bitches, they act funny. Act funny. Fuck niggas with no money. No Fuck bitches, they yeah. act funny. Yeah. Fuck niggas yeah. with no money. Uh, now a nigga wanna stick his tongue all in my pussy. Send me mad racks, big back for niggas to book me. I'm yeah. like, yo, this nigga, he just wanna help out. Uh, and keep my wet kitty cat all in his mouth. <laughs> and I kinda dig them. Dig he them. never went to prison. prison. Got a few businesses, yeah. I'll be fucking with them. In uh -huh. the visa, spending all the cheese up. Gave me black cars, a couple loaded visas. Blowing 
Jordan Tip-toe across the marble floor Wouldn't call my ex back with a calling down Slim and orderly, you getting checks quarterly Been getting bags way before quarantine So much money you would think I was laundering Airing out laundry, it's closing all your poultry If I gave a nigga back, he's still calling me Yelling out, you go, something like a boss you see Never flipping out with it, I'm dipping He know that I'm spicy like hot sauce or chicken Fuck bitches, they act funny Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's your boy Johnny Fastlane here with Music Monday Videos. And that was the Get Money Freestyle with Billboard Batty. But right now, I'm sitting next to none other than Melly Mel's. How you doing, Queen? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm chilling. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, you know? no problem. I'm glad to be here. Yes, yes. So recently, you've been dropping a bunch of new music, right? Yeah. But your latest video, um, So Much, just dropped, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, that song, So Much, is featuring Don Screw. Yeah, that's my my homeboy. He does music too. He actually okay. just dropped the EP that went number one in Ghana and Nigeria. Oh, really? Yeah, King of New York. So you guys should check him out. Yeah, he's dope. Dope. Mm -hmm. So now I'm hearing like an accent from you. Um, so let, let's just take it back. <laughs> let's go all the way back, right? Um, where are you from? What's your nationality? Well, I was born in Anguilla. And oh, wow. okay. raised in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. Because you sound yeah. kind of Jamaican. Yeah. But you were born in Anguilla. Wow. Yeah. How long did you spend in Anguilla before you moved to Jamaica? Well, I was there up until I was like five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But my sister, she actually passed away mm. on, yeah, well, she didn't pass away on the island. Mm -hmm. She got into an accident on the island. So she, they had to ship her to Barbados. And oh, wow. Yeah. That's how she passed away in Barbados. Mm. But. After that, you know, I went with my grandmother in Jamaica. My mom, she sent me and my brother back to Jamaica. So your family where, originally is from Jamaica? Yeah, yeah wow. my whole family, yeah. Okay. My parents, they just used to travel a lot back in the day to the small islands. So my mom, she even told me I was conceived in Turks and Caicos. <laughs> yeah, she said conceived that. Conceived in Turks yeah. and Caicos, born in Anguilla. <laughs> you grew up in Jamaica. Yes. <laughs> your sister was in Barbados. <laughs> like, you all over the place. All over, yeah. I mean, that's dope. So. Yeah. What kind of brought you here to New York? Well, my mom, she came to America, and that's where she sent for me and my brother. Okay. In 2005, we migrated to Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Nice, nice. And you've been here ever since. Yeah. What part of New York are you from? Flatbush. Flat. Book, 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 book. Flatbush. You already know yeah. I'm from Flatbush, too. Yeah, so that's you the only hood know. I'm repping. Flatbush. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> so... What got you into music in the first place? Because your music, I mean, you're not a rapper. I, I guess in Jamaica they called it like a DJ. Sing J, they would say. But I would say I'm more of a singer. Uh -huh. It's just the fact that I have the Jamaican background where I feel sometimes forced mm -hmm. to DJ mm -hmm. in a sense. you know. And my peers who I'm around, everybody right. do a lot of hardcore dance hall. Right. So I just try to mix everything together. What got you into it in the first place? Like, was it something you saw on TV? Um, was it your parents? Did they, they, they play a lot of music. Yeah, honestly, my dad, he played a lot of reggae music. My mom, she mm -hmm. played a lot of reggae music. My mother actually used to sing. Oh, really? My sister who passed away, she used to sing too. Mm. My older brother, he sings gospel music. So, so my whole family, blood. yeah. The whole family is musically inclined, yeah. What are you listening to, like, right now? Right like, now? Yeah. Mm, honestly, I could say I've been listening to Moneybag. Okay, yeah. okay. I've been trying to get in the hip-hop, you know? Yeah. In the hip-hop sauce, trying to, you know, mm -hmm. see what's good. Um, Female-wise, I listen to a lot of Shensia, I could say. All right. Yeah, I She's dope. Um, I've been listening to Thames. Oh, Thames yeah, is fire. I love she's her. She's on fire right Yo, now. She's dope. What about Summer her. Walker? Yeah, I listen to Summer Walker too and SZA. Okay. You know, the little R&B yeah. and her, <laughs> H-E-R. I oh, love her. Her is fire. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I listen a lot of soul music too, you know. Mm -hmm. I listen country. I okay. listen to everything. So. I mean, I could definitely hear like the soul music influence in mm -hmm. your music, you know. 
Um, I was watching a video with you. You were like outside performing. There was a live band yes, and everything yes. around. First of all, that looked fun as hell. Yes, and cold. <laughs> it was cold outside. Yes. The video looked fire, though. Yes. Um, the way that you held it down, I couldn't mm -hmm. tell it was cold. Yeah. It was giving me a lot of Caribbean vacation mm -hmm. vibes, yes. actually. Everybody was outside. It was like a live band. Yeah. <laughs> like, how, how was that experience? I mean, that experience was dope. It was different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that was my second time working with the live band. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just appreciate the opportunity. Empress J, she's another artist who actually put me on the show. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. And shout outs to everybody at Nutty Garden. That's where they kept it on Washington Avenue in Brooklyn. <laughs> so. Hell yeah, BK yeah. all day. Yeah. So Shut who up. are like some of the artists that are out um, right now that you might want to work with? Well, I mean... Is DJ Khaled an artist or what? What is he? Of course, a he's producer. An artist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he everything. Yeah. But yeah, I I really would love to work with Khaled. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we could do a lot of big things if he I was would know to, exactly what yes, to do with your voice, yes. what songs to put everything, you on. Yeah. Um, I know he had a song with like Bouju. He had yeah. some song. Uh -huh. He had a couple joints with yeah. Bouju now, mm -hmm. but like it was that shit was fire. Damn, yeah. I forgot the name of it, but I, everybody I, I, was. I on don't it. know the name, but I I definitely saw the video. Where, where you're from? Yeah. Where you're from is what it's called. No, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which was dope. I could definitely mm -hmm. see you working with him. Yeah. Who else? Um. Let's see. Honestly, anybody, <laughs> if I get an opportunity right now, like, I'll yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. I'll just take it. I so like, where do you see yourself, like, in about five years? Well, I see myself on the billboard. Yeah, I'm speaking it into existence. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Yes. But, yeah, I see myself bigger than what I am right now, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm just, I have the drive and I'm, you know, I'm ready to work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Do you have any advice for any up and coming artists, especially mm -hmm. that you're a woman mm -hmm. in the game yeah. in this male dominated industry? Mm -hmm. um, what advice do you have for someone that might see your videos and say, man, I, I want to be like Melly mm -hmm. Mel's? Well, I could say it's not easy. Um, looks are deceiving too, I can say. But just try to be grounded and, you know, just have self respect. Because I feel like once you have respect for yourself, then others don't have any other choice but to respect you as a female too, you know. That's a fact. It's a hard industry being in, so. And just try to build relationships and network with good people, you know, so. Do you feel like there is, and maybe in, in the dance hall scene it's a little different than hip hop, but do you feel like there's pressure on you to be like something that you're not or like to just like overly, yes. you know, kind of, in people's yes. faces and stuff like that yeah can you I tell feel, me about that I, well it's crazy you say that because i do feel pressure in the fact where picking the genre and the style of music and how i deliver because yeah. sometimes i have fans who saying yo we want to hear something raunchy and then when i drop something positive and conscious they're like yo stay in this lane yeah but honestly i don't want to limit myself because like i said i listen to a lot of music and i can sing anything you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't limit myself. I'm very versatile. I could do it all, you know, mm -hmm. but I understand that you have to pick a lane first. But I don't know. I'm just doing everything right now. Yeah, so. I mean, versatility is mm -hmm. key, mm -hmm. definitely. And you don't want people to box you into exactly. just like, okay, well, this artist burns incense and, and listens to India Irie and that's exactly. it. Now you can't be ratchet. Exactly. And vice versa, right? <laughs> if, if JT wants to be ratchet, I mean, wants to like read a book or something people mm -hmm. are gonna look at her like nah you can't be doing exactly. that you're supposed to be the ratchet mm -hmm. party girl the city girls, you, you know keep that. so yeah, it's good to kind of be right there in the middle and do whatever you feel yeah. like doing you know mm -hmm. um what do you got coming up well i have a lot of singles coming up mm -hmm. um i'm working on an ep i'm still confused in the sense of the direction but you know i'm getting there because I'm, I'm around the right people mm -hmm. so in no time gonna have a lot of vid visuals and music so so before we get out here and before we get into this next video i want you to let all the people know where they can find you at okay you can find me on instagram it's melly mel's i'm on tiktok as well i just joined tiktok it's oh lit. shit yeah I need facebook a melly mel's music spotify melly mel's see it's on my chain m-e-l-l-y m-e-l-l-z Everything is just Melly Mel's YouTube, Melly Mel's Vivo, subscribe, because I have a lot of visuals coming. Yeah. And you already know we're about to get into this next video. I'm going to let you introduce it. 
This is So Much, Melly Mouse featuring Dan Screw, Warrior Squad, ENT, Big Up on the Self, people. Stay tuned. Yeah. You already know it's Johnny Fastlane with Music Monday videos. Yes. Let's go. Dang, boom, she bad as fuck. Adonation. Then a dot. Dan Screw. You know what? Melly Mouse. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. So much things that on my brain. Holy. Dance girl, my world, my wonder, oh, my still remains sad. You tell me now. So much things to say right now, my good friend on the anime. So much things to say right now, the mongo wanjin me energy. So much things to say right now, grabbing a barrel mentality. So much things to say right now, the ones in my gun are strange. Real no real not fake question. Them boy they are not done, them are yes man yes, How man. we strength them used to depend on No love for the ups are just vengeance no love. People will switch up as you blink Today we are one, you see that we did a link yes, To what we grow and I mean you one kill Kill them a judge and deliver man still judge. You know them dark, friend them fear yeah. Cut the grass, sight the snake, <laughs> take no flash Heal the pain, them want me gone but me remain still yeah. While all know me not team Things to say right now, my good friend on the anime. So much things to say right now, the mongo wanjin my energy. So much things to say right now, grabbing a barrel mentality. So much things to say right now, them ones in my gun astray. Them say me pretty small and all my story. Father girl, are you alone now, me? Them won't be see me lead on in a grave. Psalms 35 as my way. Them was my friend, get them sell me out again Smiling on my face, me fake love and pretense now Them all fi hold me down But me let me have to overcome So much things to say right now My good friend and me enemy So much things to say right now Them on go on drain me energy So much things to say right now Grabbing a barrel mentality So much things to say right now Them was in my gun astray just people, me don't know Friend kill a war, see you dead and a puff smoke yeah. The ups them vex when we touch wood The bad miss need up, now we up more We are on the chart Stop your one bag and leave it like the music talk Yeah, have to make it far Call up in a me heart So much things to say right now My good friend and me enemy So much things to say right now The mongo want me energy so much things to say right now, grabbing a barrel mentality. So much things to say right now, the ones in my gun astray. What up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Johnny Fastlane, and you're back with Music Monday videos. Now, that was so much by Melly Mel's, okay? Um, a fire, fire ass song. And I'm sitting here with Ro, aka Dillinger, and you actually you work with Melly Mel's, right? Absolutely. Welcome, Music Monday videos. Thank you for having me. Yes, and sir. Thank you, Johnny. Yes, uh, so Melly Mel's is a really talented artist uh, from Brooklyn. Got introduced to her some years ago, and the relationship just always connected and we just decided to you know this past uh fall we decided to combine and collaborate and let's execute it's 2022 it's game time i mean that's dope man um so let's take it back a little bit like what exactly do you do are you a, are you a manager are you an industry professional break down what what you do <laughs> so um i grew up in the church uh grew up just listening to gospel, listening to reggae dancehall. I'm Jamaican, you know, so born and raised in Brooklyn. Nice, raising, nice. Raised in Southside, Jamaica, but, but. Queens. But it's just a matter of, like, um, I always love music. I always love passion of the theater, the arts. So um, it was, like, 2011, 12, I started interning at Irie Jam Radio, um, okay. which is 93.5 FM. Uh, so it started with that. Then I branched off into um, a media company, working with a magazine, uh, worked uh, with a few artists, uh, and, you know, just just had the aspiration of 
taking my business to another level and helping other artists. So even myself, I'm an artist. I write music. I, I uh, you know, do my freestyles, my hip-hop, and my dancehall vibe. But um, I always saw that there was a lane that the underground artists weren't getting appreciated or tapped in. Yeah. So, of course, we all know unsigned artists don't get much airplay, don't get much support. So my vision was always to give some kind of support to underground artists and give them a platform where they can be educated and they can be helped financially, some kind of support. So um, which leads into me having a credit business. And with the credit business, I'm educating artists right now how to keep excellent credit, how to... Um, financial literacy. Right, financial literacy is important. How to also leverage your credit and getting capital and then also taking your capital and putting it back into your music business. So I started my own record label back in 2019. Um, and you know, this year I, re I decided to release my own single, which is called Love Triangle. Okay. So, you know, long story short, I got a lot of uh, knowledge. I have a lot of friends and companions in this industry, uh, whether it's music, whether it's cars, whether it's real estate, you know, all types of business. and. In the car business, I've been um, in the car business about 13 years. Okay. So within that aspect, just knowing that, uh, you know, how to leverage even cars now. People are doing the Toro plays. People are doing the yeah. private rentals now. Um, I actually manage um, with a private rental company in um, in North Bergen, New Jersey called Imperial Exotic Cars. Okay, and, nice. you know, got to plug it plug in my, my peoples I'm at Imperial Exotic Cars and we you know we're just getting ready to do some major major things we're ready to take it to different cities and I just want to see everybody around me win so now yeah. like my guy and he's our guy friend to the show Alonzo um, he does yeah. like the renting of the cars on Turo and everything like yeah. that um, there's a lot of money in that right now, right? Absolutely. We actually were speaking about that. And I told him, I said, I, I can give you some tips on what you can do and how you can leverage that and even taking it to another level. Because, you know, it, you got to look at certain businesses. It's just like Uber or Lyft yeah. or, you know, Uber Eats. They'll be at a, even Airbnb. They'll be at a great rate starting out. But as people get saturated into the business, then it's like, uh, man, you're not making as much money or they have their different laws that change or their bylaws in their company. So, yeah. you know, but um, yeah, man, it's, it's a great vibe. Toro's great, you know, but uh, you guys need to come and get all your cars from Imperial Exotic Cars. Hey, you heard that's it. That's what we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? So you, you have your own music, right? Yeah. You have a single out. Um, yeah. You're your own artist on your record label. Yes, sir. Do you have any other artists on your record label as well? Um, not on my record label, but I have like artists that's around me. Like I have an artist mm -hmm. that's named um, Paris Chola with the Lux Gang. He was supposed to actually be uh, possibly here today, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Come gotta, on, Paris Chola, what's going on, still, brother? Still got to plug him on? in. Still got to plug him in. Uh, <laughs> Mike Bags, uh, you know, also <clears throat> Bones the Don. The entire Lux gang mm -hmm. got introduced to them in 2019. We did a showcase in 2019, 420. We did a show out in, uh, in Brooklyn. And from there, we've just been connecting. So That's dope. It's just so many things that is on my plate. And I got to shout out Damien for giving me the opportunity for, you know, just being here on Music Money Videos. And, you know, we're just getting ready to take it to another level. You know what I'm saying? So how important is it to you to have, uh, I guess, education not education but how important is it to you to kind of know your contracts know what you're getting into uh helping out our artists figure out the business side of things because a lot of artists they are dope they are yeah. very talented as far as music goes right. but as far as the business goes uh not not so much and i mean that's fine that's not their job or anything like that but but it you, is their job because it, i look at it like this if you're an artist and you don't understand how to manage yourself you don't need a manager you need to learn how to manage yourself you need to learn how to manage your business because if you don't understand your business because the the music business is 90 percent business and 10 percent music yeah so you know if you're not learning how to read contracts or even have an entertainment lawyer which i have an entertainment lawyer on hand my man donovan rodriguez i gotta shout him out 
Um, he helped me structure my entire label where it's a publishing company and it's a record label where I can distribute music mm -hmm. and get all my um, ISRC codes and all these things. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if you're not having your, your, your ASCAP or BMI, your performing rights organization structured, you don't have a, uh, your copyrights officially sent in, mm -hmm. those are the basics of the fundamentals of just releasing your music. Right. So if you don't have that in place, how are you calling yourself artists? I don't care about your numbers on social media. Everybody could buy numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, where, where are you getting your, your authenticity from? How are you building your business? What about your business credit? What about your business capital? Do you own capital? your name? Do you own your name? Do you yeah. have a trademark? You know, so there's a lot of things that many people, it flies over their head. They think it's just, all right, let me go in the studio, record a song. All right, cool. So what happens then after that? Right. So, you know, this is just my, my point of views. Would you ever consider doing like, maybe an online class or some kind of uh, seminar or something about that, about like um, educating artists and people that are coming up in the game right now? Well, I definitely will definitely say like, yeah, but I got a lot more work to do because I want people to understand that the results are in the room. You know what I'm saying? I want to I wanna show y'all that what I'm going to do with my own single, where the video is coming out soon mm -hmm. for Love Triangle, is actually go get some plaques, go get some radio, go mm. get some tours, go get some things accomplished. So now when I do come back around and I say, hey, you know, I got the plaque is on Billboard. I got this. It's, it's here. You know, my DRTs is this. My, um, you know. And just really take it to another level. That's when I'm really going to expand. But what's coming soon is an audio book and a, um, you know, and it's going to be an online course about the car business and the credit business. And that's what's really going to take it to another level. So, hold on. And you know, my phone is ringing. But you know, I this some um, definitely some uh, some New York some New York Brooklyn shit. But um, no, it's all good. Tell things me things happen. Yeah, yeah, for real. So, also, you have something else coming up. Uh, in the works with us, right? With Music Monday videos. Yeah. Now you can't really speak too much on it, but yeah. just give them a little bit about what's coming, what's on the way. Well, just just as we spoke about, you know, Damien and I, we've been behind the scenes talking about a lot of things for the brand and for the collective and for the culture diaspora to expand. We have some um, amazing contacts and collaborations that's about to take place. So just stay tuned, guys. Music Monday videos is here to stay. You know, think about it like this. If you're here on the ground floor and you're waiting to go to the top floor, you have to either climb the stairs or take the elevator. But we're climbing the stairs. The yes. elevator to success is one brick at a time. And with that, this is Music Monday Videos. I'm Johnny Fastlane. I'm here with Ro. A.K.A. Uh, Mr. Dillinger, and we Beckford Music Group. Yes, sir. We about to get into this next video. Rap where you from. What's that, Shanti? Where you
What up, what up, what up? We back. It's your boy Johnny Fastlane with Music Monday videos. And that was Rep Where You From by K Smash. But right now, I'm sitting here with Red Scarlet. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And you? I'm good. I'm chilling. Thank you for coming in. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So let's get into it, man, because all right, I, I know Red Scarlet already, okay? Now, she, she's sitting here. She got the red on. We got to ask Always. her about that. You know what I'm saying? It's part of the name, too. But before we get into all of that, um, let's take it back. Like, where are you from, Red Scarlet? Well, I am repping Bed Star today and every day. You already know. So if you know about Bed Star, y'all know how I give it up and how I get down. Okay. Straight up. All right. Now, what part of Bed Star? What do you mean by... Everybody say that. <laughs> best star is best star to me. Tell me Yo, what part. I'll I don't know you, the parts. I'll tell you best star is pretty big. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you in a gentrified part? I mean, well, first of all, you still well, in best star? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I raised all three of my kids in best star. My oldest is 30 years old. Damn, really? Yes, yes. You, you out here looking very young. You looking 30 yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm now. trying to keep it up. Trying to keep it up. So tell me, like. What got you into rapping in the first place? Well, when, with the corona happening, it was like, what I'm going to do? Because I am a talk show host. I have my own talk show where I interview people and all that good stuff. So when corona happened, it was like all I had to stop. So I built the whole uh, studio in my home. And at first I was trying to get somebody to write a song for me. Um, but, you know, being with corona happening and... People not maybe not believing in me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? I turned around and I created uh, a rap artist in myself. Okay. Um, so I just started writing. Mm -hmm. Writing what was going on in front of me, what I was seeing in Best Style, which is the name of my song. So my song is basically about what I have seen throughout this year of COVID going on. Mm -hmm. Out my window, mind you, not mm. outside, mm. out my window. So the things that I'm saying in Best I Song mm -hmm. literally happened to me throughout the COVID. So that's where I got my inspiration to start writing. Um, I also wrote a song um, uh, off of Little Kim's song, which that's my girl. You know, she from Best Star. Okay. So my first song was literally off of Little Kim. What like, beat was it? It was off of her, little, um, her and um, Little C's song. Uh, get money? Yes. Gotcha. So I just went in on that. I just started writing and y'all got y'all just gotta hear that song. That's a whole nother song. All but right, all right. What's the name of that one though? That is um Oh my God. Light gravy. Sorry, excuse light me. Light gravy, okay. Light gravy. Okay. So y'all make sure y'all gravy, search it. Yes, check it out on my YouTube. My YouTube is Shakanda Rouse all together. C H I C A N D A R Y L E S. So like coming up in Brooklyn, you know, you've seen a lot of things outside and that definitely is reflected in your music. Mm -hmm. um, but growing up, though, besides Little Kim, what were you kind of listening to? Because your music is very lyrical. It's different. Um, wh were you listening to like a Jay-Z or a Biggie or like what were your influences besides Little Kim? Well, with the Best I song, I basically got that from Jay-Z and Alicia Keys song, New York. Ah. So instead of me doing rep in New York, I rep Best Style. Okay. I switch it up and made it to where I live at. Even though I know um, he's from Best Style, mm -hmm. but he didn't do Best Style. He did New York. He the did whole New, New York. York. Yeah. So I'm like, we're going to narrow it down to where I'm from. <laughs> Best Style. So that's how I came up with the song Best Style. Listening to that song, New York, or Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. That was my inspiration for Best Style song. Now, that's pretty impressive because you're telling me, like, you basically started rapping during COVID. So it's 2021 right now. So that's like a year and a half that you've been rapping or something like that? <laughs> Absolutely. And you're here sitting next to Johnny Fastlane. Right? Absolutely. And so, you had her? So you had her. That's crazy. You had her. So that means I must be doing something right. <laughs> right, right. I saw the video. Um, who directed it? Who shot the video? Who edited it? Who came up with the concept uh, for the video, the treatment? Like, who was that? That would all. That was all Red Scarlet. Really, Sweet Dimples Entertainment. Um, basically, like I said, with the COVID going on, couldn't get nobody to come out and do nothing. And I'm not the type of person to just sit around and do absolutely nothing. So that's why I do so many things because I have to keep myself busy. So, like I said, with the COVID going on, I just rounded up a few people, a few family members. Mm -hmm. They came out, they supported me, and I basically came up with the whole video, the concept. Um, I recorded the video myself. 
I wow. edit the video myself. Really? I wrote the lyrics myself and I performed the song myself. Red Scarlet, all day and every day. One woman gang, baby. One woman gang. Are you self taught? Did you go to like school for this? Did you go to like media training? Like, or oh, was all this like, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna grind, and I'm gonna just do it myself type of thing? Never went nowhere. I did this all through the COVID by myself, sitting back, thinking, what I'm going to do? Like I said, I can't just sit and do absolutely nothing. I have, my mind is always racing. So that was my go-to, being that I was in the house, was music. I always loved music. I listened to music 24-7. I rarely watch TV. Mm. I listen to music. So I, I'm always listening to our rappers, our singers, our Marys, and all of that. And it expi inspires me a lot. It inspires me a lot. So... It was like, like I said, I was trying to find someone else to do it. Mm -hmm. I was going to help them become a star, become, you know, bring their name out there. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't find no one. You said, fuck it, I'll be my own star. I'll be my own star. How Red important Scarlet. is it to you to be self-sufficient, right? Because a lot of times, and it's unfortunate and sad to say, but you can't depend on people, right? Even family members, right? Everybody has their own things going. I don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. But how important is it for you to be like, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. Let me just go ahead and knock it out. That was a big lesson for me to learn. Mm -hmm. A very big lesson. Because when I first started doing my talk show, I just you couldn't tell me everybody wasn't going to rally around me and help me and do this for me and do that for me. But as the days and the months and the weeks started going, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, everybody disappearing. Because they thought they was the star. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. thought they was coming there to be, they came there dressed up and this, that, and the third. No, this is a real television production. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to help me set up, do this, do that. They say, oh, you being a diva. <laughs> you just too much. So I just decided to do it myself. So just to stop the, the arguing, the bickering with people, do it yourself. So real quick, tell me, what is the talk show about? Plus Size to Thrive is to uplift and encourage plus size women. I give my tricks and tips to keep them hip and thick. Mm. So basically the Here's show, the now. yes, okay. nice tricks and tips okay. too. But all, everything, <laughs> everything with a woman um, going out into the industry, whatever it is that you do, if you sing, you rap, you're a model, whatever it is that it is, like I um, basically tell them what, like always have your to-go bag. And the things that you need when you go into, like, if you're a model, always have some extra shoes. Always have some extra makeup in your bag and mm. things like that. Make sure you, extra clothes, you never know. They, they always dress you, but you might have that one thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that will make you stand out yeah. to these people. So yeah. you always make sure you come prepared. Like the red sparkly lipstick. That's right. <laughs> you know? S stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So before we get into this next video, Bed Stye by Red Scarlet. Yes, yes. Um, let the people know what you got coming up. Well, I have a lot coming up. Um, I am, I write as I go. So that's how I do. Like people come to me and they, you know, want me to present things that they are doing. So I write as I go. So there's look like there's going to be like two gospel songs coming out of me. Oh, really? Yes. Huh? That's different. Very different. I <laughs> never thought that I would do anything like that. If y'all listen to my music, y'all know it's kind of raunchy, kind of sexy. She said in Brooklyn, you might fuck around and get yourself killed. You had had her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I, I'm always a child of God. Mm -hmm. Brought up in the church, all that good stuff. So it's in me. So I haven't wrote or start writing a song yet. So y'all pray for me. <laughs> And with that, we're getting into Bed Stuy by Red Scarlet. You already know what it is. Johnny Fastlane, Red Scarlet, Music Monday videos. Thank you. We out. What up, y'all? This is Red Scarlet. I'm from Best Style, where you get your head pill. From you Best might even style. get your motherfucking self killed. What, what? I'm from Best Style, never, never ran, never, never will. Never, now you know never. how I motherfucker what? really feel. Nigga. I'm from Best Style, where you have to fucking nail. Nigga. You better make it out alive. It's a 
motherfucking drill. Nigga, I'm from Best Star, shake it off, it's fucking real. You don't know this life will, uh, fucking kill. I'm from Best Star, right off the A train. Where everybody trying to get to know my Red name. Scarlet. I'm Red Scarlet, shining up the internet. If I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. Yeah. Right up the hall, I'ma turn up with Tina. Yeah. Right off of Malcolm S, sometimes that's where I meet her. What, what? Head back to Brooklyn, right back to Best Star. You know where we gon' be, right up in my house. Whip up the seafood and pour up that liquor. What, what? Gentle that R&B that's bumping from the system. Mm. Singing and dancing, dancing, call up my peoples. Two dance the night away, you, you know, know how we do. Beat up that makeup and throw on that red you dress. Right. You know a bitch don't, don't know how don't, to fucking act. Jump in my Pontiac and yeah. head into the club. Huh. You could tell the way I move that I'm from Best Style. Nigga, I'm from Best Style, where you get your head pill. You might even get your motherfucking self killed. I'm from Best Style, never ran, never will. Now you know how I'm motherfucker really feel. I'm from Best Style, where you have to fucking kneel. You better make it out alive, it's a fucking drill. I'm from Best Style, shake it off, it's fucking real. You don't know this life, well, uh, fucking kill. I'm at the hair salon getting all dolled up. Make this right head more famous than it is, yo. I rock this red head, but I ain't a blood doe. As we gang up slow, rocking out with me, yo. Welcome to jungle, the hood of the craziness. Shooting the killing, we need to get out the slave. Uber's a ride you want, lift or take you everywhere. Juno just a notch down, but it get you all around. Hold up the bad girls, come on, ladies, switch it up. Grab your crown, girl, show them how we rise above. Half y'all but naked shit, so am I knowing who the fuck we are. I am from Best Style. I'm from Best Style, where you get your head pill. You, you might even get your motherfucking self killed. Well, I'm from Best Style, never ran, you never will. will. Now you know how a motherfucker uh, really uh, feel. I'm from Best Style, where you have to fucking kneel. You better make it out alive, it's a fucking drill. I'm from Best Style, shake it off, it's fucking real. You don't know this life will uh, fucking kill. Life will blind you, I stay blinded. Uh, Not eyes. playing with these guys, but they will find you. Mm. Trying to get you back, trying to have you all off track, but I am. On my way, not trying to fucking play Caught up in my mind, won't let you stop my grind uh. Hood up the downfalls, I'm a fucking hold on strong. strong Watching my hood kill right from, from my windowsill You don't know how the fuck I uh, really, really feel Cause I'm from Best Style and it's full of killers I close my eyes and I hope that they will heal us But this will really fucking kill us you. Stay on your grind cause this life will fucking build you what, what? I'm from Best Style where you get your head pill. pill You might even get your motherfucking self killed kill. I'm from Best Style I never ran, never will Now you know how a motherfucker really feel I'm from Best Style, where you have to fucking kneel You better make it out alive, it's a fucking drill I'm from Best Style, shake it off, it's fucking real You don't know this life will, uh, fucking kill And we back, we back, we back. It's your boy Johnny Fastlane, and that was Bed Style by Red Scarlet. We're here with Music Monday videos, and I got fire. Y'all know who it Woo. is. I got fire, fire, firestorm with me. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm chilling. Thank you for coming through. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, let's just get into it. Firestorm is a media professional. She's a journalist. She's a talk show host. Uh, she's a radio personality. She's a radio host. She does it all, and she Thank models, you. too. Clearly, right? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Only in the bedroom. So, oh, yeah. okay. Well, hey, all right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's get into it, right? Fire's Playhouse is the name of the first show, all right? Yes. Um, and that's on DTF Radio. Tell us a little bit about Fire's Playhouse. Yeah, so Fire's Playhouse is a great vehicle that I have. I produce uh, with Knowledge Born on DTF Radio at the studio in Brooklyn because I'm Brooklyn all day. Yeah. And um, we talk about everything pertaining to music politics which i try to stay away from but mm, sometimes you can't not in this climate yeah <laughs> pop culture and fashion pretty much everything that the streets are talking about and your show is on once a week right yes yeah, sundays from 3 p.m to 4 p.m you can watch live on dtf radio or you can watch live on instagram and uh facebook and so basically it's on a sunday so everything yes. that happened that week uh, you kind of wrap up and talk about, exactly. right? Everything yeah. that's in the culture, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From 
the the verdict of uh, what's the kid who shot those people at the protest to yeah Rittenhouse you, yeah yeah Kyle yeah. Rittenhouse to, to the vaccination you're talking exactly. about exactly right? the vaccination too <laughs> we talk she's, about everything she's transvaxed so she identifies as a person who's vaccinated just so you guys know yeah all right depends on the day <laughs> we she and us <laughs> <laughs> all three gotta of them have are your pronouns trans-vaxed. you know <laughs> yeah so tell me about um, your upbringing and and your come sure. up like. How did you get into the media space uh, in the first place? So I love to talk one. And uh, sometimes I think um, I can get on people's nerves because I love to talk a lot. And I like to talk about anything and everything. Okay. There's no topic that I shy away from. Okay. Um, and I was asked by Knowledge Born to fill in for one of his participants, one of his hosts uh, that were, they were not available. So I came to the show. And, and when was that? Like, was, was it like a year ago? Oh, no, 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 no. Eight no. years Listen, ago? Listen, I'm a vet in this game. Okay. <laughs> I'm a vet in this game. That okay. was probably, I would say, maybe eight years ago. Maybe oh, wow. Maybe even okay nine years ago something like that Mm -hmm. and i loved it and uh he offered to you know help me get my show going and uh, we did that at eight studios so shout out to eight that started the whole firestorm movement Mm. yeah and uh interviewing so many people so many people i mean make sure you follow me firestorm.com firestorm across all social medias but um that is what sparked the fire now, I had a pleasure of meeting Firestorm a, a while ago, maybe like two years ago, a year ago, something like that, at her show because I had a show that was like literally right before her show went really? on on Sundays at DTF. Yeah. yeah. Um, at 12 o'clock, the thing with Butter and then yes, also. Yes, Butter Basics. Uh, Shout yeah. out to Butter Basics. And also to with the Peachy whole DTF. The yes. Sunday's brunch. Peaches, my sis. Yes. You know, so I mean, it's all, it's a family affair, really it and is. truly. It really um, is. Tell me, like, where are you from, though? All right, so obviously I know where she's from <laughs> and we're here right now, but yeah. the people need to know. Where are you yeah, from? Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, born and raised. Okay. I got blood in these streets in Brooklyn. What I've part? lived all over from Fort Greene to Tilden Projects. When I say Fort Greene, I mean Fort Greene Projects. Okay. 102 Monument. A lot of people don't know, know me Ooh. or know that. They Yo, that's see, the hood. It is the hood. There's well, it isn't now. No, now no, it's no, not no, no. It's still the hood. No, it isn't. <laughs> I've gone through there. It's no longer the hood. There's um, crackheads. Um, they be, you know, they be there. They be well, they're, there. they're, they're, <laughs> they're doing something different now. But, um, yeah, Tilden Projects, um, Bed Stuy, um, let me see, Clinton Hills. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to my Clinton Hills family, PS11. Okay. Um, yeah, I got blood in these streets. Who were some of your inspirations? Like, um, coming up, I, I always ask rappers, like, hey, who'd you listen to? But for you, Biggie. it's, it's kind of different. All day, every day. <laughs> no, it isn't. Jay-Z, all day, every day. But what about um, talk show hosts? Uh, are you influenced by the Charlemagnes of the world? Uh, uh, Wendy Williams for me. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, Wendy, and also, me too, you know, actually. the, the Oprahs Williams. of the world. Um, but just anyone that can have a decent conversation with someone because... You know, you interview people, mm-hmm. and it's really based off of their energy. Sometimes it's like you have to pull teeth. Yeah, you yeah. Know, those interviews are the ones that are most challenging and for you're me. Like, come on. But I think that's how you grow. Mm-hmm. That's how you grow. When you can get someone who's normally guarded, uh, and you can get them talking and going without alcohol. Right. Yeah, right. Or weed. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of make them feel comfortable, and yeah. then they, they open up to you. Or sometimes you just have to prod, like my mom used to do with that nail, like right there. You just have to prod and poke and poke until you you hit a nerve. Exactly. Exactly. That's how you piss them off. Exactly. So tell me, like, how did you, I guess I want to say, like, how did you curate, like, your whole vibe, your whole style? Because it's definitely a style that you have, you know? Um, it's not like you just woke up one day and said, all right, hey, I'm going to start interviewing people. Yeah, no. You have a whole look. You have a whole thing that you put together. It's is that brand. Is that just you? That's me. I am being my true, authentic self. Mm. That is me. That is I. And I think that's the best way to build your brand is to be who you are mm-hmm. because no one can duplicate it. Right. People can try, but they can never duplicate it. They, can't, they can always make the spaghetti, but the sauce won't be the same. And I mean, if they try, then they'll just fail and, you yeah. know, their product would be horrible. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why it's always best to be who you are. Be the person that you really are. And I think that comes across better. What was one of your most memorable interviews that you had? Oh, my goodness. There's so many. I would say there was one pulling teeth where the uh, artist and I can't I will never blow up someone's card like <laughs> I don't kiss and tell. Um, and he came through and he was very high. 
He was ah, extremely high. Okay. And then, you know, on my show at DTF, we, we like to party. So we offered him drinks. Mm -hmm. And that didn't go well with the drinks and the and the whatever highness he had going on. So um, he was pretty much, I would say, sleeping. <laughs> during the interview? During the interview. Wow, okay. Yeah, so that was the toughest, most challenging. Because at that point, that person's tuned out. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, you know what? Interviews over. Next. <laughs> so on DTF Radio, your interviews are pretty cool. They're like, you know, above the board. Um, but over on Instagram, you get a oh, little yeah. spicy. Oh, yeah. It's right? a whole nother life going on. With Pillow on. Talk. Yeah, with Pillow Talk, definitely Pillow Talk Live. We talk about all things love and sex. I like to really, like, pick people's brains uh, when it comes to their journey in sex, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody is not at the same place, regardless of how old you are or how young you are. Everyone is not there. And there are so many things that guys don't know about females and girls don't know about guys. Mm -hmm. So I like to have that um, that for, for, forum where people can come and share tips, tricks, and Tips and Other tricks. things okay. that I won't Tips say because I don't know if we can say it here. But <laughs> you I think can say you whatever can you want. It, <laughs> it rhymes with tricks. Starts with the okay. Go uh, there. You go. <laughs> yeah. So, what made you want to? I guess take that over to Instagram. I know Twitter is popping too when it comes to things like that. Um, but I guess my question is. Do you think that social media is a gift or a curse when it comes to people like you, mm -hmm. when you can directly get to that consumer and kind of show them your content and get that out? Yeah. So I think it's it's I think it's actually a curse when you build a brand. Right. Mm. Um, and there are so many people you can look at now. You'll see they're changing up their format. Right. Because Pillow Talk was born during the pandemic mm -hmm. and leaning on the interactiveness and engagement of the social media audience. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing if you're trying to take it to the next level. Right. right? So you see a lot of people who started their uh, content during the pandemic are now moving away from that because you want you don't want to lean on that interactive social media audience. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's a fact. And at the end of the day, if you want to be self-sufficient, yeah. you've got to figure out how to be self-sufficient right without just, anybody without exactly <laughs> without the audience and the even though I love my pillow talk audience and I love what they contribute to the show. Um, but it's time to grow to the next level. Yeah. It is time to get it to the next level. So that's what I'm working on as well as like NFTs. Mm. Are you familiar with that? NFTs? A little bit, but okay. talk to me about it. So yeah, so that I think is going to be the real new wave, right? Okay. Because you're, you, if you create your content as an artist, whether it's a music file, whether it's a JPEG, whether it's video, as that owner of that content, you can take it and you can create a collection or one-offs and you can sell it. For an enormous amount of cryptocurrency, right? Mm. And it becomes yours. Now, the difference is if I take a picture and I post it on OnlyFans or you, uh, Instagram or Facebook, someone can easily take that picture, right. snatch it from their phone, take it, put it all over the place. Right. They can make money off of your Exactly. Picture. Sell a product. Exactly. If you have a, I don't know, a pink shirt on, they right. say, oh, I make this pink is, shirts. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, you'd have to do your research to really find out about that. Right. But if you create an NFT, that becomes an electronic digital file that when someone purchases it, so it's like a, it's almost like that picture becomes its own business, its own entity. Mm -hmm. Someone can purchase it using cryptocurrency and then they own it. But if they, re if they resell that picture, they use that picture, you still get a kickback from it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. So I think that's the new wave. A lot. Chris Brown just started his own uh, NFT company. Okay. Um, a lot of artists, a lot of uh, even Melania Trump is now into it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be the new wave. And even if it isn't, I recommend that everybody jump onto it now. now. Exactly. Exactly. Get in and get out. Get it. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's it's going to be just like the whole Bitcoin thing, cryptocurrency. I mean, it is the new wave. I mean, that's fine. And I'm glad that you came yeah. up here and talked about that. Um, because we definitely want to interview more people about NFTs yes. and we were going to interview, uh, Larry Adams, you know, RIP, but he definitely was like the, the NFT God, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but do you have any advice for anybody coming up in the, uh, media space or as a journalist? Yeah. Again, I would just say, you know, be true to yourself. Um, I think that comes across more genuine, more genuine than anything else. And I think that um, you have to really, you know, do your research, do your research on who you are, as well as the people that you're or what you're trying to do, like build your brand. Yeah. And with that and don't be afraid to be different. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. And with that being said, we're about to get into this next video. Blessed.
Uh, and you already know what it is. It's Music Monday videos. I'm here with Firestorm. Yeah. And we out. And we're blessed. Peace. Give me, give me, give me a moment. One exposure, there you go.